Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Raw Barbell Club podcast. I'm your host, coach, and all-around good guy, Andy, and on today's episode, we have Dan Shooter McGavin on. Uh, Dan is a CrossFit crossfitter, a weightlifter. He opened the first CrossFit affiliate within a school in Australia, so he trains a bunch of kids, teaching them how to move and train, and he's a really cool guy. Uh, if you like this episode, please, you know, find a friend, slap them in the face and tell them to listen to the episode. If you, uh, really want to help us out, just post this episode on any of your social medias, share it. The more people that get a chance to see that we have a podcast means the more people get a chance to listen and you'd be surprised at how big an impact that has on us guys if you really really want to help us out you now can making this podcast is so much fun and it's actually been something that's helped keep me sane during this quarantine period but it does cost us some money so from things like bandwidth fees to hosting costs and all the in-between equipment especially now that we're doing a bunch of stuff uh through uh like uh online um things just add up so you guys can actually help us keep this podcast going and all we're asking for is the price of a coffee if every single one of you guys donated a coffee we'd have enough money to keep this podcast going for another few months thank you so much to everyone who has already donated and if you are looking for that donation link it's raw barbell club dot com forward slash donate so once again that's raw barbell club dot com forward slash donate and i'm sure the link will be in the description as well guys you can still buy weightlifting house thumb tape the best thumb tape on the market it is each box comes with three rolls that are each 22 inches so it's the best value for money money it's stretchy tears easily sticky but it doesn't leave a residue it's it's really good tape so you can buy that at our website again rawbarbellclub.com and lastly we're doing a pre-order for weightlifting house bars so if you need a barbell i know a lot of us do in this quarantine life uh we're doing a pre-order on weightlifting house bars we need 30 to get it done i think we're sitting at about 13 at the moment so we need 13 more people to jump on board uh if you are interested in buying multiple bars there are discounts for multiple bars as well so just let me know uh message me dm me uh at raw barbell club on all of our social medias you'll be able to find us and we can chat there uh oh and sorry lastly i know i said last thing uh you can now reach out to us for online coaching we have an online coaching team uh, actually all of our athletes are now at the moment online athletes because we don't have a gym because it's quarantine but uh, you can reach out we can help you with all of your training needs whether that's weightlifting crossfit strongman powerlifting we've got multiple coaches on board and we're having a lot of fun doing what we're doing so again, reach out. If you need help, there's a link in our website where you can go check out online online coaching. If you have any questions, though, just, just ask. Without further ado, here is the podcast. Uh, I'm just going to start clicking record on things, and then we yeah. can just start going from there. Cool. All right. How are you doing this morning? I'm, I'm good, yeah. Lovely, lovely day. Last day of holidays? Um, no, this is week two of tattoo. Will you guys, um, so, uh, will you guys, like, go, you guys are starting yeah. to go back to proper school now as well, right? Uh, I'll go back next week, uh, four days a week, with uh, 25% of the school there each day. Okay, so that they are doing that. So that means that, let's say, if you have a 
40 person class or something, you have 10 students in a class that come in on a day to day basis. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, 40 is outrageous. Yeah, if, if there's 30, yeah, we'll just have a quarter there. Um, it's on house group, so it, some days it might be 10, some days it might be five. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, I, I just have no idea how all this like lockdown school stuff's going because it's, you know, for, for at the start, it seemed like schools were just going to stay open all the way through this uh, coronavirus thing. But now it looks like, you know, they're, they're really trying to get kids at school. And I obviously, I, I assume it's to free up the parents so that they can resume normal work to keep everything going. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, yeah, helping the economy getting kids back to school scary stuff um have you been finding all this coronavirus stuff i'm sure i mean you train at home anyway so it doesn't really affect a lot of your training but it does affect the affiliate you run right um yeah i mean i've been able to set up um remote learning you know, crossfit classes based on um, mostly body weight stuff which you know, a lot of people are doing anyway but uh you know, I try to keep it interesting and, you know, not, not just burpees and push-ups for four weeks. Uh, I'm sure the kids appreciate that. But that gets me into, like, obviously what, what I wanted to talk to you about is that you run what is the first CrossFit affiliate ever opened in a school in Australia, right? Uh, yep, yeah, that's right. CrossFit Boratar Campus. It was the first. Uh, uh, late 2012, I saw an opportunity for that it might work in a school uh, after I'd started CrossFit training myself and uh, you know, put a proposal into the principal based on some of the school plan directives that, uh, that the school was heading towards and uh, yeah, they went for it. Maybe they saw my enthusiasm and the proposal was uh, put together I thought fairly quickly, but um, as it happened, uh, you know, I, I got some funding and was able to. I started slow, started small with uh, 15 year nine boys who, some school leaders, some who were a little bit disengaged with school altogether. And we did that once a week, just one hour once a week in the drama theatre. Um, you know, just trying to get the philosophy across it across to them. What was it like with those first group of students? Uh, like, you I, like that's pretty cool that you started with a group that wasn't really the you know, the atypical crossfitter that we we now think of today but what like what what were the biggest hurdles that you had to deal with when you when you first started with them uh biggest hurdle was well you know I would say every CrossFit instructor makes a lot of mistakes, but you know, I was I was learning on the go. They were they were learning, you know, in a different learning environment, just to a different physical environment, just just to uh, you know learn how to push themselves. But I think the hardest thing was getting the buy-in. Yeah. Um, I I was you know fully into CrossFit training, and when you're new in the CrossFit, you know thing things are you get a lot of personal records and a lot of personal be uh, personal bests and you're, you're always pushing yourself and you know you're getting the new shoes and the t-shirts and the lifting shoes and it was it was just a general buy-in of you know they had it once a week and they were excited for it but you know they wanted more it was, it was just really hard i wanted to give them so much information too quickly yeah I, mean, I probably should just slow down and you know uh as, as Probably many people should when they start CrossFit. You know, don't don't go too hard too early. It's it's so funny. I mean, I guess that's it. Must be the same with a lot of sports, but I see it a lot in CrossFit. In that, um, people that get into it, they just froth straight away. Like you just, you know, and and that's I, I guess that's why all all the memes come, you know, from where people are like just walking down the street and like, hey, let me tell you about CrossFit. <laughs> because when I started, I was the same thing. You know, I. I started in 2012 or 13, um, and I, I remember just, you know, like my partner, Kush, like, she'd be like, oh, you're going to the gym? And I'm like, yeah, it's it's three o'clock. I got to make sure I'm there for the 4.30 class. I got to get get in, do some extra work first. 
um you should come it's yeah. awesome it's amazing. Roll, around. I'll roll around and practice my double unders that's yeah. it <laughs> going to the open. i'm going to the games next year <laughs> Yeah, se- seven years later, no closer to the games. Uh, no. it's just... well, further away, further away. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, with with the with the students, then uh, was it hard to get permission to start the CrossFit uh, sessions, or were, were was the school pretty open to it? Uh, permission from from the school, from uh, edu- edu- board of education, wherever wherever you need to get permission from to do so? Uh, at a school level, you know, our school's very um, proactive in with, with new directives and they saw it as, as another one, especially with the whole um, inactivity in, in teenagers and the obesity issues that we have today. Um, you know, they saw it as a, a positive to get something that was a little bit different, something running in the school. So I got my support from there. And in terms of the, the department, um, I just follow the guidelines. Um, they have the guidelines for different physical activities, and while CrossFit isn't there, there's some stuff on resistance training, um, weightlifting, gymnastics. So I guess I just follow the protocols of those few things there to uh, make sure that you know we're meeting um, the ratios of student to teacher and things like that. And at the start, how did you run? Were you running like during school hours or outside of school hours? Like, how did it work? Uh, it's always inside school hours, yep. so. Uh, Initially, that group of fifteen boys was just once a week at the same time. Not a not a CrossFit lesson per se, because that didn't start until the next year, where it became a subject or an elective or, or a sport choice. So, um, in two thousand well, and two thousand and fourteen is is when that all started as as a subject or a sport choice or an elective. So at the at the start, it was just like because uh, you guys are seven to ten, right? You're not seven to twelve. Yeah. It's just, it's just seven to ten um, uh, middle school college system. Yeah. Um, so and, uh, yeah. That when it first started, what class was that replacing? Was it like PD HPE? Uh, no, that was just done in a free lesson of mine, and I would uh, just, I would just, I'll just pull out the boys from wherever class they were in. Oh, so they would have really loved it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'll get that something getting out of English, or sure, yeah. Some other cross subject. Oh, no, that's awesome. So, uh, what was the transition like to you actually making it a proper elective and a proper sport? Um, I put in a, a proposal for an elective that would follow the um, physical and sports studies elective, which is which is done in year nine and ten. It's a two hundred hour course, so two years, whereby they'd follow the theory component of the subject, but when they did prac, they would just do CrossFit training. Uh, and uh, so we had that course running. We also had it for year nine and 10 sport. And we also had a school elective um, year eight. And they just, that's a school-based elective where year eight would do it just for one semester, which will give them a good taste of CrossFit in readiness for year nine and 10 when they picked it in the past the PAWS course. Wow. So it, it, it seems like it's actually like, quite well thought out to integrate it into the school for like, do you talk to, um, Kurt much, you know, Kurt from Sydney boys high. Uh, we message back and forth every now and then, um, I listened to the podcast you did with him last year. Uh, that was, that was really great to hear another teacher talk about you know, those sorts of things in a school setting. Mm. Well, uh, it, um, it, it's always so, it, it, it's so cool. Cause this is something that I wish I had when I was in school. Uh, I obviously was into some sort of strength training, but it was mainly the aesthetic side of it. And it wasn't until yeah. after I finished school that I, I really fell in love with CrossFit and then through CrossFit weightlifting and then through weightlifting, uh, back in love with, you know, variety again. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's so awesome to see that, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, infrastructures for sports in schools are driven by just the teachers with the passion itself. And like we hear about, you know, if you hear about, you know, other schools, like I think, uh, uh, Cal from Burley does a bunch of stuff with schools as well. And, 
uh, I'm pretty sure Erica and Damo were even found in schools in, in, in the weightlifting sphere. Um, so like that seems to be where we can draw like the most talent. And I know Oren and a couple of other boys actually studied at your school too, right? That's how they yeah. go into it. Yeah. But, uh, I think, well, there are a lot of things out there these days to, um, to, to get kids involved. It, it, it's really up to the teacher who has a, a passion in that thing, I think, to, to get it going. Um, you know, whether it's CrossFit or, or lifting or, um, you know, gymnastics or climbing or, you know, whatever. I, um, I do want to talk a bit about uh, how you got into CrossFit too, but what happens when they finish year 10? Do they, do you then have some sort of protocol to integrate them into like the wider CrossFit community or are they welcome back um, at your, your classes? In about, in about, at the end of term three in year 10, the kids start to realize, oh, I've only got one more term of CrossFit. Uh, do we have CrossFit at the senior campus, sir? Uh, no, there's a gym there, but it really is a couple of cable machines and a bench press and, and that's it. And uh, then they just... They start realizing that I oh, should come to the senior campus. Sir, uh, can we get CrossFit going there? Um, so generally, there is no, there's nothing set up for them. There's a, there's a bit of a drop off, obviously. From but you know, I, the kids wherever the kids live, I'll, I'll try and set them up with a, a local CrossFit gym or okay. um, maybe some work experience at CrossFit gyms. I've done that in the past, but uh, no, there, there's no CrossFit at the senior campus. Um, I've had kids come back and visit. Like from the senior campus, I'll come into a year eight class when you're in year 12 and realize that they've, they've missed all their fitness and they, they miss CrossFit <laughs> and, and they love the smell of the room, you know, that rubber smell, they just miss that. So that's, it's, it's pretty funny. Nah, that, that's, um, so when, can you talk about some of the boys that you've introduced? Cause I, I, I don't know really much about the CrossFitters that go to other gyms, but I know about like Oren and and a couple of those boys. Can you talk about like the transition from them being at your campuses to starting other sports such as weightlifting, gymnastics, and and ex going to a to a high level? Like, do you plan that stuff out, or is it just like a, a natural progression? You think? Um, but I don't think it's a natural progression. I mean, uh, Aaron's a special case because because uh, he's amazing at he, weightlifting <laughs> and everything. Yeah, but he was he was one of those guys that uh, wasn't an athlete. You know, he, he played a bit of rugby league, uh, but you know, he wasn't an athlete. He um, he wasn't. He didn't have any social credit at the school or sporting credit at the school because you know, you know he was a very shy boy. Um, he was overweight. Uh, he had his hair over his face. He uh, walked around with slouched shoulders, and then he just started CrossFit and gave it a go and got into it. Lost some weight, got some confidence, realised he was good at lifting. Um, realized I wasn't going to take you much further in lifting from my uh, experience as a weightlifting coach, which is pretty much zero at that point. And I, uh, you know, he found a good coach and uh, off he went. And yeah, but while I introduced uh, him to those sorts of training, um, it's, it's definitely his hard work since then that you know, led him to where he is today and uh, hopefully in the future for more. But um, apart from Oren, there's you know, some other boys. And girls who have you know shown interest in lifting or doing CrossFit or, or just making sure that they've got uh, healthy habits after Year Ten because you don't have to do sport after Year Ten. And whether they're still playing football or or soccer or basketball, I, I think their time at CrossFit Waratah campus has held them in good stead. You know, with the healthy habits for the for the for life. Do you have much support from like CrossFit? the entity like do they i mean I, I i think do they charge an affiliate fee to schools no there's no there's no affiliate fee for uh, educational or non-for-profit um, facilities so that's that's fantastic obviously but uh we, we get a christmas card about a month late every year from crossfit headquarters <laughs> i think i got a phone call from the once at three in the morning um many years ago but but that's about it. Okay, so they, they do treat you like a regular affiliate. Nothing oh, special. Yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how did you how did you find CrossFit? Um, I, I, I played rugby for a, a very long time, and I was getting sort of ready for another season. Uh, I think I was nearly 
39 or 38 years old. I thought I'll get fit. And the gym I went to where I was doing, um, you know, regular Globo stuff, they, they had a CrossFit gym to the side of it, a, a separate area. And I was look, looking at these guys and look at the crazy workouts on the whiteboard and thinking, oh, gee, that looks really hard. And I, you know, I eventually got pulled over to that side and uh, this was like 2012. I think the first workout I did was telly, you know, the five rounds, 400 meter runs, box jumps and wall balls. It, it took me a long time. Um, but yeah, I was, I was pretty much hooked straight away. Um, that was late 2012. That that coach left that gym, and we, we were lucky enough to get the two Scottish lads, Alan and Scott Wilson, who have um, you know gone on to I'd say bigger and better things since those days. But they were great coaches to um, to have initially, and we didn't realise how lucky we were to have those two guys. Uh, you know, weightlifting g- general. Um, knowledge of, of fitness banter um, but I think um, yeah having those two guys for most of 2014 and 15 really really laid the platform for my CrossFit um, career if I have one <laughs> yeah Scott, Scott's been on the podcast twice um, and I talk to him pretty regularly I say my regularly um, that's really cool it seems like uh, Newcastle is like a hotbed for just uh, talent and af- like people that are just like super athletic because I always hear of like uh, like amazing gyms up there and then you guys have so many amazing athletes as well so maybe it's just the water something in it uh, I think it's, a, it's just a great place to live with you know we're so close to Sydney but uh, you know I'm sure you've heard this before but you know it's just a big country town there's no traffic it's 10 minutes to everywhere You've got the beach, you've got the vineyards. You know. Yeah, as you say, there's uh, you know, lots of great athletes, lots of great gyms up here, so it's a great place to live. And so your entire family now is <laughs> into into this CrossFit and weightlifting space? Uh, no, I'd say it's just me in the CrossFit space. Oh, everyone else is into weightlifting? Well, my family just mocked me for my CrossFit, yeah. Do they really? <laughs> Yeah, all of them. Oh, we're going to give a shout out to Max for hitting that um, massive clean and jerk PR the other day. What was it, 97? Was that what he did? 90 kilograms, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think he weighs 63 or 64, so he's got some goals set in mind for nationals in October. Hopefully they go ahead. But uh, it's his birthday today, so he wanted to smash that 90 before he turned 15. So that's his 15 today. So wait, so what weight was it? I I, didn't, I might have misquoted. Oh, it's ninety. Ninety kilos. That's right. Um, yeah. I wonder if what did what did you want to hit at nationals, or does he not want to say? Uh, uh, I think he's written on the board ninety five. Excellent. That's amazing. What's his snatch at now? Uh, about sixty five seventy. That's good numbers. That's... Yeah, it's gone up about. 30 kilograms since, uh, I don't know, his last competition. And if you're anything to go by, he'll compete as a 105 as well in the future. So we can probably just add 100, 100 kilos to both of those numbers. So he'll be hitting oh, just... 170, 190 in a couple of years. <laughs> if, if he hits 100 steps by the time he's 17, I am like $500 or something. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah. So, do you, do you consider yourself a dual sport athlete, or do you just like doing weightlifting stuff for fun because Lisa's doing it as well? That's it. Yeah. Uh, you much prefer the it, CrossFit. I just much prefer the, the diversity of the movements in CrossFit. Um, I, I tried to do CrossFit programming and CrossFit and, and weightlifting training back in 2015, but it was just too much. It was too much volume. Um, Michael Buchanan, we were going to the Newcastle Barbell Club back then, and I, I was like doing double days and trying to trying to fit it all in. It was just ridiculous. I ended up hurting my knee a little bit, so um, yeah, I just prefer weightlifting because it, it's an opportunity for me and my wife to go to pretty cool places and 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 compete together on the, on, the, on the same platforms, you know, on the same day or on the same weekend in a, in. A, great locations with great food and yeah, it's just really good memories. 
So did Lisa get into weightlifting through CrossFit as well, or did did she, like how did, how did that happen? Yeah, she eventually got sick of me talking about CrossFit all the time. She came and joined. She was training under Scott and Alan Wilson as well. Um, she had some some spinal issues, so she pretty much just started to once Scott and Alan left to to, to go wherever they have gone on to. Um, yeah, Lisa just concentrated on the weightlifting. Um, because she's pretty, you know, pretty strong, and she she's been doing that ever since. And then when it, I I forgot what your youngest daughter's name is, but she's now uh, started yeah. doing weightlifting yeah. as well, right? Yeah, that's Mara. She's uh, eleven. Um, she among her other talents, yeah, you know, weightlifting is one of them. And yeah, that was a pretty cool day when we got to all compete on the on the same um, at the same competition in Newcastle last year. Yeah, that was cool. I, that was the comp I was at as well, right? Like, we had all our team there too, watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was a great day. So, because they're into eventing or something, is that what their other sport that Lisa and stuff compete in? Yeah, they've, they've got a, a, a horse, and a, yeah, Mara spends a lot of time up there with that. Um, but she also does, also does gymnastics and athletics, so I don't know how we fit it all in, really. <laughs> Well, that's, that's my next question is like, how, what do you, what do you see as like the, if you were to get, if you were to get your, or you already have kids, but let's say we're talking about my like little, little Andes, like what, what do you mm. recommend as the introduction to, you know, sports and movement? Like I've, I've always liked CrossFit, but I guess a lot of people say gymnastics is the, is the best thing to start them in. Yeah, I would say gymnastics and team sports. I mean, my son's never did gymnastics, but I wish he did. I, I don't think in Australia it's seen as a, a very masculine thing to do, but for movement and body awareness and body strength, it's it's amazing. What are the biggest deficiencies you see in, like, your newer students starting CrossFit in terms of movement? Oh. Yeah, I, I find that the, uh, the athletes will always do well in whatever uh, activity it might be, whether it's CrossFit or, uh, you know, general sports or but it, it's the, the kids who are you know just their general ability to to, to squat is, is really really lacking yeah um, I think they enjoy CrossFit because they're not being judged by their peers you know on how well they can pass a ball or shoot a ball or but when they get into CrossFit and they start getting some of the movements down pat then I think they feel like uh that they're doing something worthwhile for their bodies and not being judged by their peers all the time. But uh, their, their general movement capabilities when they start is, is, is pretty low. And is it, is it mainly like those, those simple movement patterns like squat, lunge, hip hinge that they struggle with or are other things lacking too? Like, like not saying that everyone needs to be able to do push-ups and things to start CrossFit, but like even just simple pressing, like if you look at how the way that their body moves during those motions might be lacking too. Is that, is that the case? Yeah, that, that is right. And um, every year group's different. Like every, every class is different, which, which I find amazing. But uh, you generally have to, I don't want to say, weed them out because everyone you know, deserves to be in the class if they chose it. But um, just making sure they've got the, the, the mental fortitude to, um, or the mental maturity to uh, stick with the movements and learn them properly is uh, one, one of the challenges I find. Yeah. And what are the... When you get a, sorry. No, no, you keep going. When you get a class that are uh, mentally mature to, to um, move on, it's fantastic. And, and you see great leaps and bounds in movement and consistency. Well, let's say you do have a, a class that's a mixed bag. Like you have some people that are okay, some people that aren't at, at those movements. How do you, like, do you just, like, separate the class into two and then scale accordingly? Or, or how do you bring up that group that isn't isn't moving well in a school setting? Uh, I, there's always a few good movers and they sort of naturally become uh, coaches in their own, you know, little setting, in their own little groups. They'll help each other out. Um, and I think that's where the, the magic is of not just me, uh, out the front all the time uh, yelling at them or telling them to move or move this way but I think 
once the once some of the other class get to get the social interaction going, then I think that's where the magic happens in across the class. And uh, just little victories for the, the students that are lacking. Uh, once they can learn, yeah, you know, once they can do a push up, or once they realise that you know they're doing the squat well, but yeah, you, know, you can see in their mind it kicks over and a little a little flash bulb goes off in their in their head and they've accomplished something. It's a little thing, but they've accomplished something and you can see the confidence build in them. What's the coolest thing um, that you've ever seen in, in your gym? Like in terms of, you know, someone, you know, maybe unlocking a skill that they never thought they had or, you know, like you, you talked about Oren, how he wasn't really, a, uh, you know, a, he was a really shy kid and you saw his confidence and stuff grow within the gym. Like, can you tell me of some other cool times? Well, yeah, well, I, I really see those little confidence builders every day and I, I'll come home and go, oh, wow, you know, that was really amazing. But uh, a couple of things stand out. Early this year, um, a girl in year 10, she wanted to jump on the box. That, you know, it was a 20-inch box. She wanted to jump on the 20-inch box. Um, and we had to start her on a 5-kilogram plate. So we started on a 5-kilogram plate went to a 10, started building up the plates. And an hour later, she jumped on a 20 inch box. It was just so, it was just so cool. You know, and you could just see her beaming. She walked around all day and she was just, she just jumped on a 20 inch box. She'd never done it before. She was apprehensive about it. It took so long, but uh, that was, that was pretty cool. And her friends were there with her. So they were able to um, yeah, uh, celebrate with her, but that was really cool. Um, another time, totally different. Uh, last year, a year 10 boy, uh, amazing, amazing athlete, major potential. Uh, he weighed 62 kilograms. He could squat 150, he could press 65, and he deadlifted 190. Holy crap. That was, a four, that was a 401 CrossFit total. Um, so that, that was pretty amazing. That's insane. I know. 401 when he was 15 years old. And what's he? What wait? What what year is he in? Uh, he'd be in year eleven now. Oh, okay. Is he still training at all? No, I mean he rides scooters. He was a um, a nationally recognised scooterer. Is that okay. a word? Um, he was just he was just a a natural, yeah. Just a freak athlete. Yeah. And I guess you don't see those if you don't expose kids to to these movements, right? Like uh, for us. For us, that's a that's a pretty big deal. But we know from you know looking at what happens in in other countries like China, where they do have introduction to you know squats, pulls, and and snatch clean and jerks at a young age. That you know the these kids do exist, and I guess they're they're always out there. They're just amazing yeah. to us because we see so few of them. But I mean, I th those numbers are pretty amazing anyway. But yeah. I mean, he didn't just turn up one day, hey, we're doing CrossFit total, let's see what we can do. No, we no, actually did it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we did a lot of training, yeah. It was just that day we did it, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I get that. I was, just, I was just trying to draw parallels between, you know, like, again, you know, we found people like Erica and Damo in schools because they had school programs, and yeah. how many other schools are there that don't have those programs? So those athletes potentially do exist. Oh, we just, have... just just sitting out there. Yeah, we haven't found them. What are the biggest, I guess, differences? Because because you train CrossFit, you compete in CrossFit. Um, what are the biggest training considerations that you change dealing with kids compared to, I, I guess, your own training and how you would train an adult, maybe. Um. I would say I always, I always start off with a lot, a lot of uh, body weight stuff with the, with the uh, kids, um, making sure they can control their own body first before we move on to weights. Um, do a lot of dumbbell stuff. Um, even though the kids really want to get onto the barbells, I'll use that dumbbell as a bit of a stepping stone between body weight and uh, you know moving to the barbell. But uh, I would say. Because of the class sizes, um, that holds you back a little bit in terms of moving to more complex lifts. Uh, you know, where the fun is, you know, the, the Olympic lifts, 
things like that. But uh, that's that's some of the biggest challenges there. Okay, so you'd be dealing with classes of 30, is that the case? Um, yeah, uh, 25. Okay. 25, 26, yeah. Yeah, that's um, a large class. Small. Yeah, I mean, the, the room is, especially the room is 12 by 7. Wait, is that how small your, your little gym is? Yeah, it's an old uh, science lab and we converted it to a, a CrossFit box. It's got a, a rig in there and everything we need but uh, it's pretty small but if i make it work i'll have different heats or um different athletes doing different things at different times so we don't clash um yeah but it works yeah so you'd be like the i guess the crossfit um games equivalent style of running things as opposed to a class style where everyone's going at the same time, like you'd have to stagger them and set up stations. Uh, and... It depends what we're doing. I mean, I, I don't always like to do the stations because it just looks like a boot camp thing. Yeah. You know, I really do like to um, you know, break, break down some movement sometimes and actually teach rather than just uh, you know, be, a, be a cheerleader. Yeah, which is uh, a lot of the the problem with a lot of the way CrossFit used to be run. I know CrossFit's changed a lot over the time, like over the years, but you know, when I first started, a lot of it was just like, you know, go harder. Yeah. And, and I trained at a really good affiliate too. Like your, your, uh, the, your coach now, um, was the owner of the affiliate that I, I trained at. Um, okay. yeah. Cause I trained at Norwest to start with. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small world. Oh, it's so small. Um, can we talk about your your competitive side? You competing? Sure. How did you... So you started... You, you obviously don't play rugby anymore, right? No. No, I like to think I can, but... <laughs> I've got the boots and a mouse guard somewhere. Um, when did you decide to stop playing rugby? Uh, 2013. Uh, I realized that I couldn't pursue CrossFit and play rugby at that high level anymore because when you play rugby at 39, um, you're, you're sore till Wednesday and that just interferes with your CrossFit training and then Thursday you're feeling good again and then you're, you're two, game, two days away from a game and you've got to get you know 10 workouts in. But um, So uh, yeah, it was 2013, I hung up the boots officially. And, the end of so, and that was for CrossFit because you were you were training CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, I realised I wasn't going to get a bit better at rugby, but I was going to get better at CrossFit, and I was going to go to the games in about one year. <laughs> <laughs> when I turned to a master. Yeah. What was the first competition you did? I, I like, I guess the Open would probably be the first one, but what was the yeah. first actual competition you did, like in per, like live on? Oh, I think it was uh, called Beast of the East at the old CrossFit Attitude in Mayfield, which is now CrossFit Light. And how did you um, go? Uh, I think it was about 100, isn't it? I might have come 26th. So promising start, but for the uh, games. <laughs> yeah, prom oh, yeah, promising start for an old guy. Yeah, well, I, think I, was, I think I was 38, 39, yeah. Do you mind me asking how old you are now? Uh, 46. Okay. Is Shooter your middle name? Shooter my middle name? Or is, no, that, is that just like a nickname? A nickname from uh, Happy Gilmore. Uh, the movie, Happy Gilmore. It's been a long time since I've watched it. That movie came out before I was born. Oh, I think it came out in 97 and I got the nickname in 98. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if that... I've always wondered if that was your middle name or if that was just like a nickname. <laughs> It's an infamous character who uh, has questionable taste for breakfast. Uh, fair enough. Um, so you you do this comp, you, you do your first open, and wh when is it that you sort of like really start? Oh, I mean, I guess you when you first started CrossFit, you get hungry straight away, but when did you realize that this was something that I really, really want to compete in? Uh, I, was, I was sort of hanging around when you turned 40 because back then 40 was the uh, the master's age. I think master's age now is about 25, but um, <laughs> I keep bringing it down. 
Well, the, the Masters HQ comps are even younger, right? They're like they're, they're like 30. Yeah, I think it's 30, yeah. Um, so it was probably the 2014 uh, CrossFit Open that I really stuck my teeth into that, um, stuck my teeth into it, and uh, got, got strong properly with, with Scott, Scott uh, Wilson. And uh, yeah, yeah. And over the years, I, I think my numbers have gotten better. You know, the, my placings worldwide have, have got better each year so that's promising i'll get there one day maybe when i'm 65 plus the problem is that as you get older people like dan bailey neil maddox and all of those guys seem to age up as well uh you will be never going to be my age category i'm older than those guys but i thought it would be easier if i once i got to the once i got past the 40 44s into the 45s um it's not easier because the blokes are in this um, age division have been there a long time. Like, uh, you yeah, know, they've been doing CrossFit a long time, so they're, they're, they're amazing athletes. So I, I thought it'd be easier because the, the pool was actually smaller, but the blokes who were in the pool uh, are very good. It's the worst. Just, like, let let some new blood in, right? Yeah, I mean, and you've only got really a, a couple-year window in that five-year bracket, you know. So I'm going to have to wait till I'm 50 plus now. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's really funny because, like CrossFit has always been a sport that you seem to be able to compete in at a reasonable level, even as you get older. And then a lot of people say like you can't do that in strength sports, like well, not all strength sports, but weightlifting specifically, like powerlifting, strongman, like you can train and lift in for a very long time. And then you see like people like Sean Lee in Australia, or even like Lu Jun broke the world record at 35 years old. So he's actually yeah. ruined the master's records for anyone ever. <laughs> like there's no master's lifters that are like, you know, have started the sport late in life that are ever going to be able to hit, break those records. No, that's right. I, I think I've looked at the weightlifting records uh, for Australia in my age group and it's, I believe the clear joke's like 180 or something. So <laughs> Some Russian guy defected here, you know, and he was a master's age and lifted 180 and off he went. Yeah, just just came into the gym one day, like hadn't trained in 40 years and still hit that and then left. <laughs> yeah. um, what, what, are, what are sort of your biggest accomplishments in, in, in CrossFit training then? Um, I, I think just getting better each year is what I'm most happy about um, yeah, getting better as you're aging up as well yeah especially in uh in gymnastic movements i mean i've always been pretty strong and that's maybe just too much focus on strength but with a, a more focus on the, the stuff that no one likes to do or why well, don't because i'm 100 kilos but uh you know i think i think just getting better at gymnastics uh, and getting my worldwide open uh ranking closer to uh the top 50 and then hopefully moving on from there. But, uh, you know, each year I seem to be getting a little bit better. Um, so I think that's my biggest accomplishment. Coming from a rugby background, uh, I'm sure, like, the mobility and stuff is pretty pretty tough. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do run wads and go wads every day. I mean, this past lockdown month, I think I did 20 hours of mobility. And... Uh, I may have only improved half a percent, but uh, yeah, my mobility is terrible. My, my overhead, my shoulders, really bad. I don't know why. Too much bench when I was little, maybe. Did you bench a lot? No, oh, I think everyone benched a lot. That's <laughs> all we did. <laughs> no, sometimes we curled as well. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know what a back muscle was. <laughs> I still don't know what a back muscle is. <laughs> uh, no, that's really cool. Um, I think that's pretty much all of the main topics I wanted to talk about. Were there any things that we missed out on with the training of kids or even your own training that you wanted to talk about? Um, no, no. It was, that seemed to go pretty fast. Yeah, it did. It's because I had it all written down. Normally I waffle on a lot. <laughs> right. Um, 
where can people find you and more about like your CrossFit affiliates in schools if they wanted to to contact you and talk to you about that stuff? Um, yeah, I don't mind being messaged uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I've got a Facebook, uh, Dan Shooter McGavin, uh, Instagram, Shooter underscore McGavin. Uh, you can email me. Uh, I've had a lot of schools and a lot of individual people contact me over the years about getting started in schools. Um, some schools have affiliated because of me. Um, I know that an ex-colleague of mine moved to another school and he started a, a, a CrossFit affiliate at another school. So, um, yeah, I don't mind sharing my information or my original proposal for CrossFit in a school. Um, just getting it out there is, is fantastic, getting kids moving. Yeah, no, that's cool. Well, dude, thanks so much for being on. I really no, appreciate it. Was first, first podcast. No, it's very cool. And I'm sure there'll be... So what happened with Kurt was I, I you know, logged off the podcast and then was like, oh, I have like 20,000 more questions now suddenly. So I'm sure oh. we'll, we'll have to do a round two. Yeah, sure. Then. I'd love to do that. Cool. I'm just... You can find Raw Barbell Club at Raw Barbell Club on all of our social media. So that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. It is quarantine. Um, if you love that episode, please give it a share. Just slap someone in the face and tell them, hey, you got to listen to the podcast. If you want to help us out, give it a share on your social media. And that will be like giving social media a slap in the face. And lastly, guys, if you want to really, really help this podcast out, you now can. Making this podcast is an amazing experience, but it does cost us some money. So we need your help to help pay for bandwidth, hosting, and equipment, and all of that other stuff. So if you have a few dollars to spare, we're only asking for the price of a coffee. And if every single person that listened to this episode donated a coffee, we'd have enough money to keep this podcast going for another couple of months. I keep saying lastly, but I have like three more things to talk about. If you need help with your training and you're looking for a coach, we can now help you. CrossFit, weightlifting, strongman, powerlifting, just general strength, general fitness, anything you need in that realm. Uh, we have multiple coaches on board and we're, well, basically our entire team is getting strong during this quarantine period no one has been left behind because we can deal with any equipment limitations we will you know have we will talk with you throughout the week um basically if you if you want to try it out just reach out dm me or get onto our website rawbarbellclub.com and talk to us there Guys, if you are interested in buying Weightlifting House Thumb Tape, the best thumb tape on the market, each box comes with three rolls of 22-inch thumb tape. It's amazing value. It's the best thumb tape you can buy, and I definitely, definitely recommend it. And this is actually the last thing. If you are looking for a barbell, we're doing a pre-order for Weightlifting House bars. We're at 13 currently. And we're trying to get to 30, which is our minimum requirement. Guys, get on it. We're so close. And these bars are going to be amazing when we get them. So again, just jump online, find that link or DM me and, and let's chat about it. Thank you so much for listening, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Super Sonic. Uh-huh.